Hello everyone. In our previous lecture, we have seen about Gaussian mixture models. Now let us see about how the EM algorithm is used in Gaussian mixture models. First, let us understand the likelihood function for GMMs. We know that a Gaussian mixture model is a probabilistic model that assumes that the data points are generated from a mixture of several Gaussian distributions instead of a single distribution and each will have its own mean and variance. The goal of MLE in the context of GMMs is to find the parameters of the model namely the means mu k, covariances sigma k and mixing coefficients pi k for each Gaussian component that will maximize the likelihood of the observed data x. We can define the likelihood function for a GMM as P of x given mu comma sigma comma pi is equal to product of n equal to 1 to n into summation of k is equal to 1 to k pi k into normal distribution of x n given mu k comma sigma k. For maximization, let us apply the log likelihood for this function. So after this we get this equation here this product becomes summation after applying the log. So remaining and all same. A key issue in MLE for GMMs is singularities which is represented in this diagram. This problem arises when a Gaussian component's mean mu k approaches exactly one of the data points xn as shown in the right hand side of this diagram. We can see that this mean is approaching to exactly one data point and because of this its variance will become very small. In this case the likelihood function can become extremely large because the Gaussian density tends to infinity as the variance is decreasing. As the variance of one Gaussian component approaches to zero, the log likelihood can go to infinity which in turn leads to a non-optimal solution and it is not meaningful for the practical applications. So to address the problem of singularities in MLE for GMMs, the expectation maximization algorithm is used. This method alternates between two steps namely expectation step and maximization step. Here expectation step is nothing but E step which estimates the expected value for the latent variables given the current parameters. And in M step we maximize the likelihood function with respect to the parameters using the expected values computed in the E step. These steps are repeated iteratively until the convergence that is until the parameters stabilize or change very little between the iterations. Now let us see the steps in EM algorithm. First step is initialization. Here we start with initial guesses for the parameters namely mean, covariance and mixing coefficient for each Gaussian component k is equal to 1 to k. This can be done randomly or we can use some heuristic algorithm like k-means clustering. So we are making the initial guess about the parameters in the initialization step. The second step is E step or expectation step. In the initialization step we have assumed the values for parameters. So based on the current parameter values in this step we compute the posterior probabilities that each component k was responsible for generating each data point xn. This is also known as responsibilities which can be expressed as gamma of z and k. This is calculated using the base rule which we have seen in our previous lecture. So gamma of z and k can be expressed as pi k into normal distribution of x n given mu k comma sigma k divided by summation of j is equal to 1 to k pi j into normal distribution of x n given mu j comma sigma j. Now in the third step that is in the m step we update the parameters mu k sigma k and pi k to maximize the expected log likelihood using the responsibilities that we have computed in the E step. The complete log likelihood of the data xn given the latent variables zn and the parameters mu k, sigma k and pi k can be expressed as shown here. Here we take the log for pi k and the normal distribution. In this case the term z n k can be replaced with the responsibility component gamma of z n k which is computed in the E step. 
So, the expected log likelihood with respect to the responsibilities gamma of Z and K can be expressed as shown here. So, we can see that Z and K is replaced with gamma of Z and K. Now, we have the complete log likelihood function. Let us update the parameters mu K, sigma K and pi K here. So, first let us update the mixing coefficient pi K. The log likelihood term involving pi k in this equation is taken separately. That is q of pi k is equal to double summation of gamma of z and k into log pi k. So, to maximize this q of pi k with respect to pi k, subject to the constraint which we know summation of k is equal to 1 to k, pi k is equal to 1, we use the Lagrange multiplier method. Because whenever we have a constraint on one particular equation, if we want to maximize or minimize that equation, we can use the Lagrange multiplier method. So, by applying the Lagrange multiplier method, this equation becomes as shown here. So, here we have this term plus lambda into summation of k is equal to 1 to k pi k minus 1. So, this is the Lagrange multiplier method. To find the optimal values of pi k, we need to take the partial derivative for the Lagrangian equation which we have derived. So, in this case, let us consider the first term. So, if we apply the derivative with respect to pi k for this first term, this log pi k will become 1 by pi k. So, it can be expressed as summation of n equal to 1 to n gamma of z and k divided by pi k. Now, let us consider this second term. If we differentiate with respect to pi k, this pi k will become 1 and this constant will become 0. So, we will be having only lambda as expressed here. Now, let us combine these two terms and set the derivative to 0 as shown here. To solve for pi k, let us take this lambda to the right side. So, it becomes minus lambda and to get pi k, we take this lambda to the denominator. So, it becomes minus summation of n equal to 1 to n gamma of z and k divided by lambda. To get the value of lambda, let us use the constraint summation of k is equal to 1 to k pi k is equal to 1. So, in this equation, let us substitute this equation for pi k. So, which can be expressed as shown here. So, here let us take this lambda outside the summation. So, it becomes minus 1 by lambda into double summation of gamma of z and k is equal to 1. So, we can express this uh, summation of n equal to 1 to n as n and summation of n equal to 1 to n gamma of z and k as n k. So, n is the total number of data points and n k is the effective data points which contribute to the component k. So, since we can express n k as n, in this equation, we can replace this double summation of gamma of z and k with n. So, it can be written as minus n by lambda is equal to 1. So, now we can get the lambda value. So, lambda is equal to minus n. So, if we substitute this uh, lambda value in this equation, we can write pi k as pi k is equal to n k divided by n. So, where n k is nothing but uh, this uh, summation of n equal to 1 to n gamma of z and k. So, in the place of lambda, we write the minus n. So, it becomes plus. So, we have final expression as pi k is equal to n k divided by n. So, thus we have updated the mixing coefficient pi k. Next, let us update the parameters mu k and sigma k. The mean mu k of the component k is updated by maximizing q with respect to mu k. This gives the update mu k is equal to summation of n equal to 1 to n gamma of z and k into x n divided by summation of n equal to 1 to n gamma of z and k. Here, this is the weighted average of the data points where the weights are nothing but the responsibilities gamma of z and k. Similarly, we can update the covariance matrix sigma k as shown here. So, we replace the xn with xn minus mu k into xn minus mu k transpose. This is the weighted covariance where the weights are the responsibilities gamma of z and k. So, thus we have updated the mixing coefficients mean and sigma k in the m step. So, we iterate between the e step and m step until the convergence of the EM algorithm. So, thus we have seen about the EM algorithm for GMMs in this lecture. Thank you.